Well, after that, I'm just going to quickly invite our next speaker as well on the stage. Uh, we have with us a supermodel, actor, as well as an inspiration when it comes to being fit and fabulous. Can we have a fit and fabulous round of applause for Milan Soman? Thank you. Thank you for that uh, introduction. Thanks. Um, good morning, everyone. Uh, very enlightening. First, uh, first talk. Rajiv, that was very good. Has he already left? Lucky fellow. Okay, good, good job, good job. So uh, just to give you a little bit of a background about myself, you all know uh, some things about me, about the modeling and the acting and the so on and, and the Iron Man and all of that. But uh, the first uh, business that I was into was actually events, experiential marketing, which I started in uh, 1989. And that is something that I've really been um, very, very fond of. Uh, it's a lot of fun for me to, to create experiences. So you might, be, uh, you might have heard about this event that I, I do called the Pinkathon. The t-shirt that I'm wearing, it's a woman's run. It's the, it's the biggest woman's run in the country. And in fact, it's, uh, it's the biggest uh, organized multi-city running in event in the country today. And the reason I started this was really for a very small, uh, a small reason. It was an indulgence, actually. As a runner, as an endurance runner, I've been running now for about 15 years. I saw that running was becoming really, really popular across the country. And not only across the country, across the world. It's, it's a phenomenon, as we all know. And um, I noticed that in other countries, like say in the US, for example, up to the half marathon, the uh, part participation of women is about 60%. It's 60% and 40% men. So women are actually driving uh, the whole activity, which is running for health. But in India, the participation of women is about 6 to 8%. So I, I just thought to myself, you know, why would it be uh, so low? I mean, everybody, all of us know that health is important. Whether we do anything about it or not, at the back of our mind, it's always there that, yes, health must be a priority. So what was stopping Indian women from participating in this phenomenon. So I said, uh, in fact, to my company, I said, you know, we should, we should just put together a woman's run and see what happens. And even in my company, they said, you know, but women don't run. And my partner's a woman. And uh, they said, the women don't run, they're not interested, they don't have time. Um, you know, they have so many responsibilities. Why would they come out and, and give this time and to themselves? Because as we know, Women don't take out time for themselves. You know, even in the UK, when they, when they did a poll on why British women don't exercise, one of the top reasons was guilt. So knowing all those things, we said, okay, let's see what happens in India. Culturally, we are different. Let's see what it is. So we started the first Pinkathon in uh, Mumbai in 2012, in December. About 2,000 women participated. There were uh, three distances, three kilometers, five and 10 kilometers. And, okay, 2,000 women is not a big number. This is, this is Bombay, and we expect, you know, a lot. Um, but what really blew us away was the energy. You know, those 2,000 women coming together, not for any political reason, not for a religious reason, not for any other kind of ideology, but just to celebrate themselves. Even they didn't know what they were there for. We said, this is a woman's run. This space is for you. And 2,000 women gathered there. They danced the Zumba. They walked, they ran, they had a great time. Nobody was watching them, nobody pointing fingers, nobody judging. And that reaction was what made us say, let's take this across the country. Let's start talking about women's health. And then we found another problem. When we started talking about women's health, everybody, so of course we went to sponsors. We said, you know, we want to do this women's run in Bangalore was the next city. And they said, okay, very nice. What is the cause? We said, the cause is uh, women's health. And they said, what is that? So, it was so difficult to explain the concept of maintaining your health at that time. This is five years ago. Things have moved pretty rapidly since then. But what is the concept of maintaining your health? Not only physical health, mental health, emotional health. There is no concept. When we talk about health, we are talking about hospitals. We are talking about doctors who actually deal with disease. They don't talk about health. Health is in our hands. So, these were concepts that slowly, slowly... I was learning, the team was learning, that this is what our event is about. We didn't even know what it was really about. 
and we took every city we went to, the response was even greater. Last year, we did the Pinkathon in eight cities. We had about 70,000 women participating. And not only that, they started sharing their stories everywhere of how running was changing their lives. And not that we say that running per se is important. It's not necessary that you have to run. The necessity is to take out some time for yourself. And not only for women, for men, for everybody. We are all busy. We all have jobs and careers and businesses and so on. We understand that the priorities help, but we don't make the effort to take out that little bit of time. Because sometimes we think, okay, we have to go to the gym, we have to spend one hour in the gym, okay, I have to do this, it's going to take this much time and that much time. Actually, it doesn't take any time at all. It may, it may take five minutes, it may take 10 minutes of your day, 15 minutes, as much as you want, as much as you can set aside. And that is the thing that we started focusing on, and women started sharing their stories, which was really amazing for us to see how it was changing mindsets, just having this celebration. So us, for us, it changed from being a run, a woman's run, to a celebration, to an empowerment, because when women do that, saying that 10, you know, even when you start and say three kilometers, three kilometers is like you don't, you don't have a concept of what three kilometers is. So they come and they do three kilometers and say, okay, that was not bad. I think I can do five. Then the five uh, uh, person who's doing five says, I can do 10. And now, of course, we have a half marathon, so they, they try for the half marathon. But the whole thing is that it's, it's a mind-opening experience for, for all the women there. And why women are important. So all these lessons keep piling up. Why women are important is because women are influential when it comes to lifestyle in the family. What is the lifestyle you're going to adopt? What are the things that you're going to buy? What are the things you're going to eat? How are you going to behave? You know, how, how you respect yourself, how do you respect yourself, how do you value yourself? A lot of it depends on the women's point of view in the house. That is what we discovered. And we saw that families began following these women who were participating in Pinkathon. And we have uh, women who have participated multiple number of years. They're sharing their stories, saying, this is how our lives have changed. This is how our minds have changed. This is how we've begun to believe what we're capable of, what we can do, how we can not only change our lives, but our families' lives, our friends' lives, our colleagues' lives. And then they've talked about how their um, lives have changed in the companies that they work. It's just incredible. It's like a whole new door was opened. And for somebody like me, I mean, I've been through that before. Right? I've been in endur endur endurance sports since I was young. But to see it happening to somebody, say, who has never been out of the house to exercise or to do any kind of sport, which is most of India, India does not have a culture of sport, no culture of fitness, no culture of exercise. So to see this door opening was incredible. To see women coming up with new ideas, let's do this. So we have a system of ambassadors. We have an ambassador program. And we have about 500 ambassadors across the country now. And they all wear this t-shirt. It doesn't say Rajdoot, it says ambassador. This is a new one, it's only for me. But they constantly talk about the importance of women's health. Now, they have started their own training programs to encourage women from their localities, their uh, companies, their building complexes to join them. Women, again, who have never been out before. So it's not something that we do. It has become like a ripple effect. It's become like a, you know, a, a, like a community that is spreading every day through the people that we have touched. And it, it's really amazing to see. And it, occur, it, it just goes across social media because we don't have enough money to put it on television or to really use conventional media, media uh, to spread the message. But through these women, and in every city, now we'll be doing the event in uh, Mumbai on, uh, in December, there will be 10,000 women participating. We have a cap of 10,000 women in each city. We can't afford to have more women participate because of the logistical costs. So when we started by saying that women are not going to do this, in fact, when we went to Bangalore for the first time, they said, why are you doing the event at 5.30 in the morning? Nobody is going to come. Do it in the evening when women are watching TV, and they'll take out some time from uh, you know, a soap they don't really like, and they'll come and participate in your event. So those are the mindsets that we have. And this is the way for us and for thousands and thousands of women across the country, the mindsets are changing. And not, that is not just the important point. The important point is how they are now empowered to spread this message. How they have begun to believe that this is a new life that they have got. And they have said that 
we have this, this information, we have a, achieved this value, this understanding of this value, and now we are going to spread this. And that is really amazing. From the time we started, where a lot of corporates came and said, you know, we don't talk to women. Women don't decide anything except which sanitary napkin to buy. I mean, that's, that's the attitudes, the mindset, of course, uh, the research and all is there, but so much of it is changing now. Because now, when we have thousands and thousands of women not only participating, but spreading the message, becoming active the entire year around this event, that is when we have people now coming to us and say, we want to be part of this event. We want to know who these women are. We want to use their voice. We want them to know who we are, because we support this. We support this empowerment. So Pinkathon, gradually and organically, became the spokesperson for three of the most important things in the world today that everybody talks about. One is empowerment of women, one is women's issues themselves, and one is health. The whole world is talking about this. And today, when we talk about Pinkathon, and at the Pinkathon event, this is all you see. You see people who are interested in health, they're interested in empowerment, and they're, talking, they're just interested in changing their lives. So my message to you here today is, because all of you are a lot of advertisers and agencies and control a lot of money, is please come to us, support this cause. We have now uh, gone into other social issues, so we are, are right now running a, a, a pilot project in Delhi about menstruation, because we also discovered through this, because Again, as, as a man brought up in India, I'm not really clued in to women's issues. But through the Pinkathon, yes. I've, I've got so much insight. I mean, it's, it's incredible. I speak to women every day who say, how do you know that? I speak to women who are working in women's issues, so, social uh, awareness issues, who don't know the things I know, which is incredible, which means there is so much to be spoken about. So when, I, when we discovered that a lot was being done about, health, uh, about hygiene. You know, we talk a lot about hygiene today. And we, there are a lot of um, uh, organizations talk about menstrual hygiene. And we just thought that we're talking a lot about hygiene, about which sanitary pads to use, whether to use cloth pads or whether to use uh, menstrual cups and so on. But nobody's talking about menstruation itself. And what are the two most important things about menstruation? Apart from the fact that it's a miracle, it's a taboo. Nobody wants to talk about it. Even mothers do not talk to their daughters about what to expect before they have their first period. And the stigma. The stigma is that it's a bad thing, which we know. We've used it. We've seen it in advertising about don't touch the pickle and all of these things, all the myths that we, we talk about. The stigma is that it is a curse, that women are being punished by God. And a lot of the issues that women face in society today in the patriarchal society today, stem from this, that you are being punished every month. This is your punishment for some imagined mythical crime that you committed thousands and thousands of years ago. And every woman is paying for that. So we are now using the Pinkathon to address issues like this. And when we, we do this, it just becomes more and more popular because the kind of value that it brings to women's lives when they say, OK, I wanted to talk about this. I didn't know where I could talk about this. Or I wanted to actually run or exercise or take out some time for myself, but everybody says you can't do it. We have another run called the Fearless Run, which is at midnight. So we, we are attempting to address all kinds of issues that are actually coming from the women that we deal with through Pinkathon. They say, they say you know, this is, this is something that is not good. Can we talk about this? So we, as, a, as an agency, have just created a platform. We just created a space. Now it is for the thousands and thousands of women who have come into that space, who have been attracted to that space, who are now directing what is to be done. And the good thing about that is that it just adds more and more value. So when that is translated to, if you're talking about content, that content is incredible because it really comes from the heart and the soul and the deepest part of the psyche of these women. And it's, it's been a really, really great uh, learning experience for us. And um, as I said, if there's anybody there who, who would like to uh, participate in any way, uh, don't hesitate to get in touch. Uh, how do I give my number to them? You'll get it. But thank you very much for giving me this opportunity to speak here. And um, all the best for the rest of the 
sessions. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, uh, Milan. And uh, I'd like to invite Mr. Devendra Deshpande, Principal Partner Invention with Mindshare, to please come forward to present a memento to Mr. Milan Soman. <laughs>